Hello everyone, Skippy here, and welcome to One Piece episode 934. Directed by Tatsuya Nagamine and supervised by Midori Matsuda and Keita Saito. After Komaki started the fight off on the right foot, 934 should be able to wrap it up quite nicely, largely thanks to it being our main series director Tatsuya Nagamine's first episode since this arc first began, displaying a storyboard full of fantastic atmosphere and well-crafted action that's unlike anything else, and being supervised by our character designer Midori Matsuda once again in newest addition to the supervisor rotation Keita Saito, with the former showing off what might just be her most polished artwork yet, and the last continuing to stick very close to Matsuda's sheets but with a bit more of a sharper and shading heavy touch. Throw in some key animation from series regulars like Tetsuro Nureki and Masahiro Kitazaki with the promise of more in the end product, and this episode should end this brawl off with a real bang. So will episode 934's quality be fully representative of the craftsmanship of our series director and the involved staff? Well let's get back to the snowy landscapes of Ringo to find out. <laughs> This episode covers the remainder of chapter 937 in the first 8 pages of chapter 938, and so as to not have the Zoro stuff be secluded to the first half only and have the rest of the episode be purely dialogue, most of the stuff taking place in other places of Wano, like the flower capital in Ebi So Town, are moved to right after Zoro and Kamazo's first set of clashes, and it's all done quite well in terms of leaping from page to screen, adding filler where necessary to make Yasui's entrance back to Ebi So make more sense, and giving the major plot heavy moments that level of atmosphere that Nagamine specializes in. Sure, I think some people may have issues with the added Udon scene since it creates an entirely new character for Luffy to just wash, but I think it's necessary to continue on with the higher level of importance that Udon has been given in the anime, and to show Luffy's constant growth and yearn to bring his hockey to the next level. If anything, what I more had a problem with in the adaptation here, is the very odd decision to have consistent flashbacks, mostly in the first half and in some of the second, that recap big parts of episodes that weren't all that far back in terms of plot relevance, with not one but two flashbacks to an episode as recent as 932 feeling really unnecessary. It sort of slows down the momentum that the episode builds every single time that they decide to cut to one, and I really think it would have been much smarter of them to add in more Udon filler and extensions to the Zoro half, which is kinda what I was expecting based off the preview. Don't get me wrong, I still absolutely adored the adaptation here for the most part, and from dialogue to action, everything feels as tense and engaging as it should thanks to Nagamine's mastery of his craft, but I feel like it's unfortunately brought down just a tad by feeling like it has to remind the audience of something that is still kind of recent in our mind, but it's thankfully something that Nagamine's storyboard makes up for wholeheartedly. While not as stylistically strong in the sections that are nothing but pure dialogue, Nagamine's board still manages to hit on all cylinders and shows off his talents in a nice way. From almost looking like a Hollywood film with the film camera focusing in and out on objects and people in the foreground and background, to a fantastic amount of scale in the Zoro fight that allows it to be more than just a thousand clangs like it was in the manga, Nagamine's touch is as far as the eye can see, and I mean that quite literally. Having so much attention to detail in a purely visual aspect that absolutely accentuates it directorially. With the already fantastic largely black and white colors that only single out Zoro's blood as Kamazo strikes him, made even better as the scene drowns itself in reds as Zoro smirks and telegraphs perfectly that the man is out for blood. And when there's several color shifts and expert compositing usage like this all throughout where it matters, Nagamine flexes so very much after Komaki herself was a tough act to follow. It may skimp out a bit on the mainly talking head scenes by trying not to go too crazy, but even during that, there's just such a Nagamine level of quality that makes it look as eye-grabbing as possible. And that's all that I could ask for when the clear priority for the board in episode as a whole is good old Mosshead over here. While Keita Saito does correct a lot here and there, and still contributes that shading heavy, sharper version of Matsuda's art that we've come to love, Masahiro Kitasaki's own art throughout the bulk of the episode is absurdly polished and full of thick line work and crazy shading despite being the top credited key animator, and is kind of more the star of Saito's half than Saito himself in places. Though once we reach Midori Matsuda's smaller section this time around in the remaining few moments towards the end of the episode, we get to see some of her absolutely strongest artwork on the series to 
date with wonderfully pleasant shading and line work that proves to be malleable as far as them being corrections go, allowing animators' idiosyncrasies to still shine through despite being corrected, providing me the best way to transition into how well animated 934 was, despite having more or less the same number of noteworthy key animators as last week. Starting with 925's Mitchell Gonzalez returning to animate a very surprisingly weighty and smeary beatdown between Luffy and the anime-only gifter, that had my jaw drop at just how well done it was. Not that I didn't expect this type of work from Mitchell in the first place considering how fantastic his short but sweet scene on Soba Mask was, but I did not expect it to be this well-timed and full of some of the best smeary sumo animation that we've seen since Chu's efforts back in 902. And Tetsuro Nireki puts a nice bow on things by animating the final blow to the bear with his lovely character-packed animation that bounces whenever it gets the chance. But as you and I both know, Zoro is the definitive star of this entry, so it's only appropriate that he gets some craziness too. As Tetsuro Nireki kicks things off in the last bit of their duel with some crazy bouncy timing and lovely smears that both bring a simple swing of the sword to life in the best way possible, bathing itself in his Onishi-like effects work and using Nagamide's dynamic board to its absolute advantage, being followed up by the one and only Katsumi Ishizuka providing what might just be his best finisher since Zoro vs. the Straw Man, kicking into high gear from the very beginning with his trademark rippling effects work and art that adds such an intense layer to the scene before Kamuzo launches into the air and slices and dices as Zoro smears himself towards him with some great background animation. Before his inky impact frames that he made a staple of his work recently rear their faces once again to deal the blow to the Mummy Man, finishing the scene off with those ever so lovely cubes in a fantastically dynamic layout, continuing to cement him as my favorite on the series and giving this episode the explosive finish that it needed. While there are definitely some downsides to this episode in areas that I think 933 had a slight edge in, Tatsuya Nagamine still did the very best he could with the content being covered to create a series director level episode that concludes this duel off nicely. That's only really brought down a bit by some weird adaptation choices. However, we're not done with this green-haired boy in the highest level of hype for the anime just yet, as next week we're launched right into episode 935 from Kenichi Takashita from Yutaka Nakashima's Bowl and Kenji Yokoyama. As expected from his last few rodeos, Nakashima's board looks excellent and full of vibrance and color that heightens Kenji Yokoyama's pleasant looking corrections and what looks to be Chu Young Su on the bulk of the animation side of things, topped off with a brand new opening theme starting from it that has the potential for even more absurdly strong animation, and you can consider me still on the edge of my seat. Anyways guys, that's it for now, I'm Skippy, and rest in peace over the top, you gave us many one dreams and one wishes.